This is the Power Break Podcast number 086, titled, You're Not Yourself When You're Hungry. Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobBrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. What's going on with you, man? Well, many things have been going on. A lot of many, st- things. many things, you know, but uh, I'm finally getting back to some training. I was told by the doctor, one doctor said I shouldn't be riding, and I did anyway. So I went to a different doctor, and he what said, What a could- shock that you wouldn't listen to your doctor. No. Yeah. No, yes. that's what it is. Yeah. Don't, no, I'm calling you out, man. You didn't listen to your doctor, but go ahead. Well, I talked him into <laughs> allowing me, but this, I went to a new doctor, and the doctor said... <laughs> that's even funnier. <laughs> this doctor says I can't train, so I'm going to go to another one. <laughs> How awful is that? Well, you know, if you don't get what you want from a doctor, go find another doctor, right? You are a mule, my friend. And that's what this yeah. old guy told me one years ago. He said, my doctor said I shouldn't have salt, so I went to a different doctor. <laughs> 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 so How odd. about yourself? You you look like you've been training. I have, yeah, yeah. It's it's actually going really good. I um I signed up for a race, people. Oh, so, so, that's yeah, what we've been waiting yeah, for. Which yeah, where where yeah. is it? What is it's it? It's actually a half marathon. Uh, oh. It's down here. Yeah, it's in October, so it should be in good shape by then. Uh, you can do you can yeah. train for that. Oh yeah, for sure. So yeah, signed up for a race. And let me tell you, man, I am going to compliment the heck out of you uh, because I'm about halfway through the Battle for the Mind book. Oh, and man, so good. If anybody hasn't read that, man, that's a, you are, you are cheating yourself by not reading it. Oh, what a great you. read. Thank man. You, JT. Yeah, it's excellent. I sat down, I took notes. I'm actually trying to teach my kids. Uh, Whoa. yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a fantastic book. I'm super impressed by it. You like the price. <laughs> I, I loved the price because I got the JT discount. <laughs> That's all right. If you didn't give it to me when well, you weren't looking, I was going to steal it from your <laughs> shelf anyway. <laughs> well, folks, there has to be some kind of uh, for, uh, something to say thank you to JT. He devotes his time here. We don't get a paycheck. So we don't have a sponsor yet. So we try to sponsor it with my books. And so you're um, buying the books that we talk about when you go on my website. Of course, that helps. It also helps by your leaving a review and or a rating. Uh, wherever you download the podcast, as we like to say, as we begin our program each week that we'd like to thank all of you that do that. And even those who uh, take the time to drop us an email to let us know that you're listening. Yep. It, we uh, really appreciate it. It really does. Uh, let us know that we're not just doing this for ourselves, although we would still do it. I think we, I, I know I enjoy the heck out of it. Okay. And the fact that other people enjoy the heck out of listening to us, enjoy the heck out of it, is, is incredible to me. What are yeah. Bob and JT going to do next? That's yeah. it. Well, the question I have for you today, JT, is what do you look like when you are hungry? I am the commercial, man. I am that dude. Uh, yeah. Hang, <laughs> hangry at work is a real thing. And it's funny, being a police officer, there are times where you don't have time to eat. Yeah. So yeah, I always now, you know, after years of of learning the hard way i always have something in my car so if i'm on my way to a call i can grab something in the like a pastrami sandwich or something a pastrami sandwich <laughs> not quite no usually like an apple or some or some nuts or something like that um something that will actually get me to the actual time where i can eat but yeah no it's it's not a good focus time for me um so like when you're on patrol okay yep do you have like a set time to say okay i'm going to go off patrol and i'm going to go to lunch so you can ask if you're clear for meal. Oh. So it's really because we get paid for our lunch time. We okay. don't we don't get we don't come off the clock for that. So um the bad part about that is you're getting paid, so if you don't get to eat, so be it. However, you can get um what's called a missed meal um overtime. It it it's paid at a different rate than normal overtime, but if you miss your meal you can put in for overtime, so you get paid a little oh, bit for that. So a little so, compensation. To yeah, say. there's a little bit of something. But, yeah, there's been times where, you know, the bad part is is about halfway through the shift when you're really hungry, man, you start getting that headache and you're like, yeah. Oh. yeah. Do you write more speeding tickets at that time? <laughs> <laughs> I purposely make sure I don't pull anybody over when I'm like that. Yeah. When you're hangry. Yeah. How about you? Uh, do pastors ever get hangry? 
Yes. <laughs> uh, it's, what? It's, it's best just to prepare for it. You know, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know, like you said, there are times when you don't get an opportunity. You know, yesterday I, I called to the hospital to see somebody and it, when I when I was going to eat. And so you just that happens, yep. you know, and yep. you, you just learn to deal with it. But, yeah, after a while, man, it, you know, it shows up on you start, you know, dragging and your mind isn't clear and you, you need to take some time to eat something. Yeah, and you know something that's weird, though, to me, and maybe you can explain it better because you know a lot more about fasting, but when I know I'm fasting, like, it doesn't it doesn't have the same effect, it seems. I think you're right. Why? Yeah. Is it just because spiritually I'm more focused? Or, or mentally, you know, you've prepared for not eating. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you know, you, you, your body goes in cycles, and, and uh, uh, when the cycle is, you know, I normally eat here. Why am I not, you know? Yeah. And so mentally, when you're fasting, you're you're preparing for those times and say, I want to make it through that time. Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Well, w- we know this. When we are hungry, we often get what is termed hangry, a combination of hunger and anger. The point is we're not ourselves when we're hungry. Uh, same goes spiritually. How are you when you neglect the Bible or prayer or worship or fellowship with other Christians? You may not think you change, but ask those closest to you, and I'm sure they would say, hey, you're not yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they would definitely say that. <laughs> well, what, what can you do for a person like that? Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And if we back up a verse, we see exactly how we're supposed to do that. Brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression... Uh, You who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness, but keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. So the old Snickers commercial actually is giving us some good insight on how we can help others spiritually. You're not yourself when you're hungry. (laughs) Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, Let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. It's also titled, You're Not Yourself When You're Hungry. Folks, if you haven't been to BobRubaker.com, Go up there, check it out, uh, and you can subscribe to the blog, and it'll show up. Um, the email chimp is is on it, man. He gets it done yeah. every Monday. Every Monday, he? yeah. As long as is, I feed him, if I could, as long as you feed him, I'm, that's right. That's a great I, point. Look at that. Well, what I feed him is the the article. Is the article? That's right. Yep. Um, he takes care of the rest. You know, it's funny in AA. Um, they have a saying: if if you're not feeling, if you're feeling like you're you're just not yourself or, you know, for a, if it's an addiction or NA, if it's an addiction or, um, any kind of 12 step program, they ask, are you hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? Oh, and those are the categories that they figured out will make people want to drink again or take drugs again or make them, you know, oh, really? you know fill in whatever sin you want to there. Right. Wow. Yeah. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Those wow. are all places that you don't need to be. <laughs> yeah. So you, you have to you know, come up with some defense against that. Yep. That's right. Anyway, the blog is called You're Not Yourself and You're, You're Hungry. Uh, that is, of course, made famous by the Snickers ad campaign as the person was depicted out of a character but changes back to themselves when a friend offers the person a Snickers candy bar and they return to normal. It's quite an obvious spiritual lesson, although I'm not sure intended by the agency that wrote the and produced the commercial. However, when a Christian neglects spiritual food and the food of God in prayer, corporate worship, reading the Bible and fellowship with other Christians, they are like the character in the commercial. They begin to act in ways that are not themselves, since we all get like that from time to time. And like the person in the Snickers commercial, we need someone to come along beside us let us know we're not ourselves when our, we're hungry. Yeah. So Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2 again. Brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in the spirit of gentleness, keeping watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Now, we think of that as a big transgression. That, of course, does mean that. But how about a transgression just being hungry and not feeding like they should? So that's why he says in the next verse, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So the question is, would you be willing to step into someone's life who is not acting like themselves because they're starving themselves spiritually and overindulging in things of the world so much that they don't have time or room for the things of God? Would you be willing to step into their life? What that person needs is a dose of the gospel. Case in point, the scene in John chapter 11 when Martha 
was not herself in the way that she approached Jesus during the time of grief after her brother had died. That was Lazarus, of course. Grieving is known to produce a lack of physical appetite, but much more. uh, Oftentimes, it it also results in a lack of a spiritual appetite. And the result is just like the Snickers commercial, as the person acts strange and often says things that are totally out of character. Martha, although a devoted follower of Jesus Christ, was known as a person who was filled with a lot of anxiety, which is the scenario, of course, added to her grief and caused her to show a bit of anger and even bitterness towards the Lord Jesus Christ. But look how he handled it. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. That was at the time of Lazarus' death. Okay. Martha says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. (laughs) But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give it to you. So Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, "I, I know he'll rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And anyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Yeah. Notice how he gave her a good dose of Snickers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it was sweet. Yeah. It was fulfilling. It had protein, <laughs> spiritual yep. protein. Yep. It also, I mean, it had substance to it. But he didn't beat her over the head. No. You know? No. He just... No. And it, yeah, he didn't, he didn't judge. He just reminded her. Just reminded yeah. her yeah. of the gospel. Yeah. But Jesus never tries to straighten her out or scold her for words. Instead, he pointed her to spiritual food, the truth about the resurrection in himself. Now, I'm sure that all of us know someone who is starving themselves spiritually and not themselves as a result. Just take note of the people that you did not see at the public worship service on Sunday. Yeah. Okay? It's time for you to make a call, offer them some spiritual snickers, reminding them of the gospel. Uh, According to Galatians 6, it's not time to clobber them, but as Jesus did, take the gospel to them and to the hope in Jesus Christ. Of course, that wake-up call includes a challenge to them with God's word and leaves them with a challenge to express their hope in Jesus Christ. This little bit of spiritual nourishment will help people who are grieving, along with people who have turned away or whatever the reason, they've neglected some good spiritual nourishment and they're not themselves. Like the person in the commercial who, who heroically points out that the hungry person is not themselves when they're hungry, then brings the solution by giving them a snicker. So the Christian who steps up of the out of their comfort zone to show concern for a brother or sister in Christ is a real burden bearer. Yeah. You know, and if you're not present, none of that can happen. You know, Christ talks about how other people will know who we are and that we are his by the way we love each other. Yeah. And if you're not present, that's that can't happen that physically cannot happen you know and sending somebody a text isn't love <laughs> i can do that hey uh, where were you yesterday yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not it Just, that's that's misread i mean that's that's the bottom of the list yeah. i mean when you stop without contacting another person the best is face to face to face second best okay a call yeah. Okay. At least yeah. they can hear your voice. Yep. Third best, maybe an email. And the fourth is a text. Yeah. And because like you said, I don't know how many times I have literally misconstrued what yeah. somebody meant because I don't have any of the other cues that come with communication. Mm-hmm. I mean, almost all of communication is not based on words. It's based on actual nonverbal communication yeah. that body language and body language. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And they say that like 80% because we've all seen those pictures of somebody that's crying, but they mm-hmm. actually were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we, we weren't there for the context. So it was, uh, we were unable to figure that out. Right. So, so if someone thing. is staying away from church, say, because they feel like they've been scolded and they feel guilty about it. And you come across and say, Hey, Hey, missed you on Sunday. Yeah. Okay, you might have had a good intentions yeah. in your text and saying, hey, I missed you on Sunday. That's what you yeah. wanted to say. Yeah. But it comes across like, oh, great, you missed again. I'm going to come over and clobber you in the head. <laughs> right? And that's, and, and depending on their mindset, they may take that. That's what like, I'm saying. He might yeah, think right. that. Yeah. He might they're think they're in the wrong yeah. space yeah. if they're hangry. If they're hangry. <laughs> <laughs> well, check it out. The, the uh, uh, article is called, uh, of course, You're not yourself when you are hungry. 
and uh, it's founded the the, uh, the Power Break blog is found at bobbrubaker.com. Check it out today. The Power Break blog is found at bobbrubaker.com. All right, what else is going on, Bob? Anything new and exciting? This is the time of the year at Christ Community Presbyterian Church here in Clearwater that we uh, renew the covenant of our breastplate of remembrance. Yeah, awesome. We do that around the Easter time every year so that we have a good list going of people that we're all concerned about, we're praying for, and of course, be taking ready to take the next step and invite them to an Easter service because Easter is the most likely service, other than, of course, they say that sometimes Christmas Eve is, but those two services, Christmas Eve and Easter, are the time that people who are not Christians are more apt to come right. with an invitation to right. a, a church. And so we renew the covenant of the breastplate of remembrance, and I wrote the book about that, and you can get the book at uh, com. And what it is is a, a reminder that the basis for caring about people who are not Christians, the, to pray for them, first of all, and to remember the, them when you go before the throne of grace. And so we renew that covenant here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. We ask people to fill out the forms themselves, at least 12 uh, or so, and um, then turn a copy of that in to us at uh, in our office and what we do is keep a master list and oh, so that's awesome. at our prayer meetings on Wednesday evenings we pray for the entire list of people on the breastplate so of good. remembrance so, good. so we're remembering those people to come before the throne of grace as we ask you to renew that covenant uh, all the people that attend this church it's all about remembering them before the throne of grace realizing as the priest did he remembered who he was representing when he was going before God with it uh the priest had 12 stones on his breastplate, and those 12 stones were the 12 tribes of Israel, so he never forgot. And may we have that same attitude and never forget to pray for our friends and our neighbors that we are concerned that they would come to Christ. Check it out. It's called The Breastplate of Remembrance. It's in the book section at my website, bobbrewbaker.com. And while you're there, check out the sermon links to the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. Very grateful to be going through the book of Philippians, and you can check out those links at bobbrewbaker.com. All right, so here we go. It's time for What About This? That's the time on the podcast that we go through questions and answers. Feel free to submit your questions by email to jt at bobbrewbaker.com, and we'll get to answering those on an upcoming Power Break podcast. You know, I wanted to ask you a question, JT. All right, what is it? Okay, the, the question I've had people ask me, you know, you're saying about the real enchilada. Real enchilada. <laughs> the first, en- you know, the, the big enchilada or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They want to know, what is, what is that? What is the real enchilada? What do you yeah. mean? What is the big enchilada? You said, you always say, now in question number one, the big Oh, enchilada. yeah, yeah. And well, it goes along with the whole big kahuna too. Oh, the kahuna. Yeah. Big kahuna. Big kahuna. Yeah. Yeah. Big enchilada. Numero uno. It's the one on the top. Because let me ask you this, Bob. If you are sitting in an enchilada shop, like those exist, but if you are, and the enchiladas are there, are you going to take the bigger one or are you going to take the smaller one? Let me ask you that. I, I want the, the big sm- one. Oh, I would take the smaller one because I'm not sure I'd like an enchilada. Uh, well, see, that's a, you don't know the enchilada, but see, I know the enchilada when I talk about the enchilada. <laughs> You know, I could say the word enchilada a lot right now, and it would just, it would make no sense. All right. There you have it, folks. You know, you know for now on, I'm just going to say question number enchilada. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. You the big, the medium, and the small enchilada. That's how we'll Oh, know. the questions one, two, and three? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with the big enchilada. Oh, now I get... Oh, I'm reading you now. This is scary. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world, Bob. It's really weird. Officer uh, John Trevino. <laughs> is that what people get on, on your shift when you're guiding other officers? You know, you are the sergeant. I am the sergeant. So do yeah. you ever say, hello, this is the big enchilada? <laughs> no, but I will if you want. Yeah. That will, that will be funny. I do always try to make a joke because, man, if you if you can't keep law enforcement a little on the light side, man, you will go. You will yeah. go Rudy because Rudy can't but. take yourself too seriously. No, that's for sure. Um, all right. Question number one, <laughs> the first one. All right. The big, you know what? <laughs> so um, let's talk more about uh, being that person who says you're not yourself when you're hungry. How can we um, do that without coming across as judgmental? So we have somebody that obviously is a little grumpy. 
perhaps a little angry, lonely, or tired. Yeah. So how do we come across without being judgmental when we're talking to well, that that's, I mean, that's a great point because we too often do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, the key to it is in, in that those verses I read from Galatians chapter 6. Brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual, point number one. Yep. We are concerned about our own spiritual life. It says in the book of Acts chapter 20, when the, the Apostle Paul talked to the elders of the church at Ephesus. He said, take heed to yourself, to yourselves, and to the flock of God, yeah. of which God has made you an overseer. Yep. So the first thing is, you who are spiritual, looking at yourself first of all. And then he says, restore him in the spirit of gentleness. Right. I actually spoke on this this past week when I was talking about gentleness from the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5. When he talks about gentleness, then he says, let your gentleness be made known to all men for the Lord is at hand. The word gentleness um, means without rough edges. And I gave the example that... Um, I heard a preacher talk about a, a little boy that was visiting his grandfather who was a cabinet maker. Huh. And it seemed like all the little boy was just bored to death because all it seemed like his grandfather did was sand, 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 sand. And the little boy says, Granddad, don't you think it's smooth enough? And his, his grandfather <laughs> said, Son, the last thing I want is someone to get a splinter from this. Wow. And the point is that all of us have rough edges. Yeah. And there are many ways that God is using heavenly sandpaper to sand us down so that we will be gentle. Yeah. And so the point, he says, in Galatians 6 is to, if you go to someone, you do it in the spirit of gentleness, without rough edges. And you keep watching yourself. And then you understand, the, the third thing is to understand what you're doing is you're not changing them you're helping them because you're helping to bear their burden yeah. yeah likewise when we go down to second timothy chapter 2 verse 24 it says the lord's servant must not be quarrelsome but kind to everyone able to teach patiently enduring evil correcting his opponents with here it is again gentleness that god perhaps may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil after being captured to do his will so the way that we can keep from going, becoming judgmental, number one, we go to that person. We don't do the techniques of text or email or even phone call. We go to that person. That's exactly what we I show that, start to talk about. show yeah. that how much they, we care. And then we go in the spirit of gentleness and we keep an eye on ourselves. And that comes across. It does. It comes sure. across. Yep. And if it doesn't, at least you're planting the seed to say, listen, I care about you. You know, how can I help you? Yeah. And so, yeah, those two things, those three things that I pointed out from Galatians chapter six and also Second uh, Timothy chapter two, very important to keep in mind. Keep that from going into that judgmental mode, and they may be, still be misconstrued by the other person. Yeah, it, it happens. Yeah, but your your conscience is clear because you have followed the orders. You didn't go into it. Like we that. didn't go into it. That's right. Mm -hmm. I know. I um, I great example of that. You know, it, it ended up costing a friendship. There was a friend of mine. That we were going back and forth and we were actually discussing some stuff at church. And the question was really just a, the question I, I was being genuine with the question. And then the response came back and I didn't agree with it, but, but my response to him was, was really more of a, okay, well, if that's how you guys feel about it, I, I have to respect that. But because that wasn't said in person, and the mm -hmm. way I just said it to you, okay, well, if that's how you guys feel, I have to respect that. He took it as, well, that's the way you guys feel. You know, you guys are obviously dumb for that. And I guess I just have to learn to deal with it. That's how he took it. Mm. Yeah. And our friendship literally changed after that. And I didn't even know why. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really important that you don't do things like this. In any other form, but in person. Uh, electronic communication has, has actually hindered many things uh, spiritually. Because, yeah. you, know, you know, when we talk about Matthew chapter 18, you know, if someone has offended you, you go to that person. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, if you have offended somebody and that you realize you have done that, you have to go to that person. Yep. And too many times we're, instead of going, we text them. Or yeah. instead of going, yeah. we email 
un, yeah. or maybe even phone call. But even that, yeah. people, you know, unless you're FaceTiming, which I don't think that's a good thing. But, it, yeah, I guess it could be if they were FaceTime, they lived in Timbuktu yeah. and you couldn't it's better. Make, get a flight yeah. over there. But anyway, that where is Timbuktu? I think it's in South Africa, isn't it? Yes, it is. is it? Okay, yeah. so anyway. Yeah. You're pretty smart, man. <laughs> I hang around this guy named JT. You, you got your smart shirt on today. <laughs> yeah, I, I I cannot tell you enough how important that is to doing it because you cannot. You know, I I, I just kind of developed this motto that no matter what, I cannot text somebody the feeling of my hand on their shoulder like I care. That's right. right. Yeah, I just can't do it. You have a big so, hand too. So I do have a big hand. Yeah, so you're yeah. big guys. So. My yeah. kids always complain because they say I, gra- I grab them too hard, and I think it was like a tender touch, but apparently I'm a Neanderthal when it comes to stuff like that. Well, you know. <laughs> They're like, oh, you- Dad, you just grabbed me like really hard. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I thought that was dental. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for mm-hmm. question yeah. number two? Okay. The medium enchilada. <laughs> How do you get beyond the fear of stepping out of your comfort zone and reaching out to one who is not themselves? And that this is really the secret. This is the thing that people often will say, well, I didn't want to say anything because I just didn't know how they take it. So, yeah, sometimes that's a big excuse. Uh, and I, I um, <clears throat> when I thought about this question, I thought about the scene in Esther chapter four. <clears throat> Remember that Esther and her people were being um, going to be annihilated by a guy named Haman in the, I mean, they were in captivity in this foreign country to King Exar- Artaxerxes. And he, uh, Haman was the second in command and he decided to get rid of all the Jews. So Mordecai, who is, is, uh, uh, Esther's stepdad, because her parents had died, and so he was actually, actually her uncle, and he took care of her. Right. And so she's reporting back to him all the time, and he sends word to her and says, hey, you got to do something. You have to go before the king. You have to do this. Our people are going to be annihilated on such and such a date. And she said, I can't go before the king because if I'm not summoned to come before the king and he doesn't hold out his golden scepter, it's, I'm dead. That yeah, would keep me from going before yeah. the king. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here, here's what he says. If you keep silent at this time, uh, and relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. That such a time as this is very important. Yep. You have a friend who's hangry, not themselves. Who else can deliver this message but you? So which is worse, uh, getting clobbered in resentment or criticism by the person who is not themselves or... Leaving that person alone and knowing that you had what they needed, but you refused to do anything. Yeah. Uh oh. James chapter four verse seventeen says, "Whoever knows to do the right thing and fails to do it, for him it is sin." Yeah. So, step back and say, "Okay, your friend is not themselves. You have the wherewithal, the word of God. You have the re- the knowledge that you need to say something in a caring way." Not beat him over the head, but if you don't do it, sin. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it was funny. We had a very bad call last Wednesday. It was a double homicide. Mm. And, and I will tell you, in 23 years, this is the second worst crime scene I've ever seen. Oh, my goodness, really? Yeah, it was really, it was genuinely awful. Um, and me and my, my partner, Mike, um, he's the other supervisor that... I work with most of the time, but there's technically four supervisors on Wednesdays, which is when it actually happened. Um, but you know, he and I went, we were, uh, I think he was third on the call and I was like fifth and we were coming from the other side of the city. So, but as soon as we got there, you know, he and I just have the experience. There was nothing that anybody did wrong. It's just, we had the experience, but man, it's just, you know, to have to put yourself in that position time and time again, it, it's, you know, that every time you go in there, there's a cost, you mm-hmm. know, when you're going in and you're dealing with, I, I took the dying declaration of one of the women. She literally died within a half an hour of me talking with her. Um, and you know, that stuff does take a physical men, mental toll. Yeah. But afterwards, you know, I sat down with him man, and, and we just encouraged each other because we are here for that time. Yeah. That's why we're here. We have that experience. We can pass that on to these younger guys so they can be that person. 
right? But we both ended up on afternoon shift together for that time Mm -hmm. to make sure that that was done right so that person can be prosecuted, right? So, and that's a, that's very important to look at it that way. Yeah, yeah, and, it's super important, regardless of the price, because mm-hmm. he and I both know that it takes a toll. Yeah, by the end. But um, yeah, so let's let's turn to the physical aspect of life. I kind of kind of took it in a in a more dark place, but okay. let's, let, let's bring it back out. Um, so let's talk about the physical aspect of this principle, uh, and, and I think I know where you're going to go with this right out of the box. Bonk. (laughs) (laughs) Then they're done that. Yeah. Okay. Bonking comes from neglecting nourishment and hydration. So one of the best ways you, best things you can do for someone to, is to remind them to stay hydrated and nourished, which is a reminder to yourself. If you're in that half marathon coming up in the fall, uh, that you train that way. But you know, in the physical aspect, when you're training, you have to stay above that. When it happens, you want to encourage those to get something to eat right now. Yeah, you know, and sometimes it it means like if you're riding with somebody and they're just in that state where they really can't go, you pull off the next convenience store and go in and get something like a Snickers or something that yeah. get something with, a, with some salt in it, yeah. get something with some sugar yeah. that's gonna get you get you back in. Yeah. Yeah. But the key to it is keeping yourself hydrated and keeping yourself in nourishment too. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that along with everything else we're talking about today is takes discipline. And as we point out, discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobRubaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 086. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobRubaker.com and listen for Bob's answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. I just want to step in here and talk about a little book that I wrote called The Multiple Blessings of Easter. I wrote that several years ago, but it's applicable at any time, and we're in this Easter season coming up. And uh, just want to point out that it's a great opportunity to share with someone else the, the gospel as presented in what is known as Easter, the time of the resurrection, the celebration of the Lord Jesus Christ rising from the dead. Check it out at BobRubaker.com. Click on the books and go down to the little book. It's called The Multiple Blessings of Easter. Check it out at BobRubaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.